The text for the sermon this evening is from the 15th chapter of St. Mark, the first verse. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, You have said so. And the chief priest accused him of many things. And Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priest had delivered him up. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. Here ends the text. In the name of Jesus Amen. Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. Do those words sound familiar to you? That's the way the church confesses Mark chapter 15 in the Apostles and the Nicene Creed. You see, you can't really go to church, at least in our church, without confessing in the creeds about Jesus' suffering, about Jesus' crucifixion under Pontius Pilate. Who's Pontius Pilate? Well, Pontius Pilate was the fifth governor of the Roman province of Judea. He served under the emperor Tiberius. His place in history has been well established. If nothing else, the church knows him from the creeds. In salvation's history, he will forever be remembered as the bullied governor who allowed the brutal beating of a man he believed to be innocent and finally allowed for his crucifixion. That's who Pontius Pilate is. And who were the bullies? Well, the chief priests were, right? They should have known better. Wasn't it their job to know the teachings of the scriptures? Wasn't it the chief priest's job to preach of the salvation sinners needed 
and the coming Messiah? Wasn't it their job to encourage the people in godly living? Yes, it absolutely was their job. They should have known better. They had the scriptures. But instead, the chief priests, they made up lies. They falsely accused the Messiah. And more than that, they incited the people who followed their leaders. They bullied Pilate. And when Pilate gave them the choice of a known insurrectionist named Barabbas or Jesus, they chose Barabbas. In the end, Pilate gave them what they wanted, even though he knew he knew, as the text says, it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered up Jesus. Well, okay then. Do you want me, what do you want me to do with the man you call king of the Jews? Pilate said. Crucify him. That's what we want you to do. But why? Why? What evil has he done? But all they could say was crucify him, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. The battalion of Roman soldiers, they answered directly to Pilate too. Let's not forget that. Saint Mark tells us what a nasty, nasty group of people they were. It is written that they clothed him in a purple cloak, that they were the ones who twisted together the crown of thorns that they shoved it on his head. And then they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And while they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him, they knelt down, mocking the God of the universe to pay homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak that they had given to him, put his own clothes back on him. They led him out to be crucified. Yeah, that's Pilate. The creeds get it right. And it's good that the church is to confess what the Bible teaches us about the suffering and crucifixion of Jesus Christ under Pontius Pilate for us. In some ways, Pilate and the soldiers got it right in our text. Regardless of what was in their hearts, they got it right when they called him the king of the Jews. The king of the Jews. But more than just being an earthly king of a particular nation known as the Jewish nation or the Judeans, Jesus is the eternal Messiah. That's right. The eternal Messiah. The one promised to Adam and Eve. The one promised to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob and to David and to all of his chosen people in Israel. The God of nations. The King of kings. That's who this King is. Did you know that Judah means to confess? Therefore, Jesus is the king of all of those who will confess him as God, rightly confess his father, and also confess the spirit who proceeds from them. Jesus came into this world from heaven to bear witness to the truth. That's what he said. And here is the truth. Jesus was, 
and he is today, king. Not in the worldly sense of a king, no, not that, but the heavenly, divine king. Yeah, that kind of king. God, the Son in flesh, that kind of king. And while the way of the world is to look for power and glory in rulers, the true God glories in suffering and in the cross. He manifests his power, his greatness, his awesomeness in a cross. There is the power of the gospel to save sinners like you and me. Jesus' suffering, Jesus' crucifixion under Pontius Pilate, it was for you, for your benefit. That's why it happened. Jesus is the Lamb of God, you see. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who takes away your sin and my sin who takes away the worldliness of the worldly, that's you. Those who by nature have been woven into the very fabric of the world, that's our sinful nature. The otherworldly Jesus Christ comes into the world made of flesh to redeem worldly people like you and me. Baptism, that's for you too. Absolution, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, that's for you too. This is my body, this is my blood given for you for the forgiveness of sins, that's for you too. And when you are weighed down in your guilt and your shame, When the worldly wiles has gotten the best of you, and let's be honest, it does way too often. When the world's worries have made their best effort on you. When fear and pandemic, when trial and tribulation cause you to doubt this king and you become more worldly than you should. Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate for you. He endured crucifixion under Pontius Pilate for you. Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. He has called you out of this world into his own kingdom. And while you and I must live in this world for a while, we will one day be taken from it. I don't know how. I don't know. Maybe by natural death. Maybe by pandemic. You see, these things have no authority over us. For you have been baptized. In baptismal water, you have already died to this world and to your sins. In your baptism, you have already been raised to live with Christ. Already. Now. Already. So that as St. John writes in Revelation, the second death has no power over you. No death, no trial, no tribulation has any power over you. And while Satan will do his best to sneak around and try to lead you away from your king, to scare you to death, He cannot do it, dear friend. Don't let him. 
when fear besets you, when your flesh begins to be woven back into the world, you say to it, I am baptized. For my Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate for me, don't you know? My Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate for me, don't you know? You world, you have no authority over me. So let me go on my way, for I embrace the truth of the cross. I embrace the one who hung upon a cross. By grace, through faith, I embrace the one who was raised from the dead, who lives and is my king today. And by the way, he's going to remain my king unto all eternity. In the name of Jesus, amen.